Hi guys, welcome to Synthrorist, I'm your host and in today's video I will be recording my voice over the footage I took uh, during my holiday. It was a late May uh, where I went to center parks in Sherwood Forest and today I'll be discussing my favorite Rolex model when we talk about a sports range. Rolex Daytona has been my favorite watch for ages since the very beginning of my watch journey and it was really timeless and classic since I can remember. In today's video I'll be sharing my experience and my knowledge about Rolex Daytona 116520. It will be more practical than, than technical because I simply tend to focus more on practicality of watches rather than technical aspects. So I've worn many of Daytona watches, I must say probably majority of references are well known to me and I will show you some photos with Daytona watches that I wore in the past. You will see them on the screen along with the footage. This watch, it must be the most practical and most versatile watch that Rolex has ever created. It has a perfect size of the case. It has very useful chronograph function, which I really like and I tend to use it. And during my high school days and my uni days, I used to use chronograph functions to measure time that takes me to finish an exercise or, or anything really related to counting time precisely. And Rolex Daytona was always there. <clears throat> and I remember in 2014 when I first started doing watches, I remember I've always wanted one. There is something special and remarkable about Rolex Daytona watches. They are so simple yet elegant and sporty. For me, this is the best daily wear you can get at the moment from Rolex. Sporty design, very distinctive finish on the case and the bracelet with polished surfaces uh, complemented by brushed surfaces, just stunning. And with new ceramic Daytona, the Daytona range is just beautiful and worth looking into. However, it all comes at the price. The waiting list for Rolex Daytona with ceramic bezel is just crazy. They say that the waiting list is 10 years and it's already closed. That's what they say. The case of Rolex Daytona has 40 millimeters of diameter as I remember and for me that's just a perfect case size. Rolex has never tweaked the size of Rolex Daytona because it was perfectly done in the first instance. I really like the unclusteredness of the dial even though we've got chronograph complication which takes a little bit of space due to three subdials that need to be fit in order to have this functionality and for me the best chronograph watches are Rolex Daytona and Omega Speedmaster. They are done very nicely, they stick to tradition of the original design, they don't tweak much, it stays really true to its original design and form. I just cannot stop looking at, at Rolex Daytona watches, cannot resist this whole design. For me my favorite reference was always one 6520 which is a Daytona watch with Zenith movement as opposed to in-house Rolex movement that's pretty much 90s the thing I like about Zenith Daytona watches was subdials the color of the subdials Zenith Daytona has black subdials as opposed to silver kind of subdials and my favorite combo is always white dial over black. That's my perfect sweet spot. As I mentioned before, the size of this watch is just perfect. It's nicely sized. Some people may say that 40 millimeters is too much for them uh, when you have small wrists. However, in my case, I've got pretty tiny wrists. However, Rolex Daytona watches, they fit me perfectly and they sit on the wrist really nicely. For me, it was always about Daytona watches and this premium prestige design. They didn't used to be popular in 80s or 90s, especially Zenith Daytona watches because people thought that if, if it has a Zenith movement then 
it's not a real Daytona watch, however right now the prices of Zenith Daytona watches are skyrocketing because of the Zenith movement, which is quite ironic, I must say. However, I will talk about the reference 116520 with white face, as you can see from the footage, because I spent with this watch quite a while. So I've got some few thoughts on it. As I said in the beginning of this video, I went to center parks in which you just enjoy your time doing different activities. I got to tell you, I've never took the watch off my wrist. I was wearing it everywhere, even in sauna, in aqua park, and there was no, there were no problems with water resistance. That makes this watch amazing for daily wearing because it's both elegant, it's sporty, and also it's water resistant because the crown is screwed in. Chronograph pushers are also screwed in, so you don't need to worry about water getting inside the watch. It's gonna be all watertight, and I was enjoying my time with this watch on the wrist. It's really comfortable. I I must say oyster bracelets are one of the most comfortable bracelets of, of all. That's a fact really. Besides Patek Philippe Nautilus bracelet, I think if I were to make a list of top 3 most comfortable bracelets I would put first would be Nautilus bracelet, it weighs next to nothing, then I would say oyster bracelet and maybe AP bracelet and that's it. Also the watch has a flip lock on the clasp so you don't need to worry about losing your watch or clasp accidentally opening during your daily activities it's very practical really like the finish on the bracelet and how the case was left polished totally polished surface as opposed to brushed and polished surfaces in Rolex Submariner case. It gives this watch this more elegant profile as opposed to sporty, like totally sporty design. The watch is really versatile and this white face just pops. I like the Rolex crown on it. I like this contrast that subdials create in this watch. It's just gorgeous. It's stunning, isn't it? When you wear this timepiece then you really have peace of mind because it sits on your wrist really neatly and you feel it on your wrist, it's accompanying you as opposed to annoying you on your wrist. The weight of the watch is really well balanced, it's spot on in terms of weight and these are the attributes of an iconic daily wearer, a practical watch that you can wear everywhere, every day. There is something special and remarkable about timeless design that people that draws people into buying these watches and right now the prices of Daytona are steadily increasing on some models is just skyrocketing as I mentioned before ceramic bezel version is just booming at the moment however for me my favorite reference would be 16520 with a zenith movement that's just my perfect watch I know the bracelet will be more flimsy it's not gonna be with solid endlings and it's not quite as solid as, as modern Daytona, but that's just for watch collectors and huge enthusiasts who don't care about this kind of stuff, they enjoy watches for what they are. There is one problem that I've got with Daytona watches, that's quite a tough one actually, because even though I do appreciate the design of this classic chronograph, I really miss a date function on it, because during daily wearing I really check date quite frequently, however I will always be in love with Rolex Daytona watches. During my holiday I was cycling, I was swimming in aqua park, I was just enjoying the time and Rolex Daytona was always on my wrist during this time and it's really amazing how this watch could withstand everything I had to go through. Swimming in a pool, enjoying water slides and cycling and, and it was just about right. This video is some sort of my tribute video to Rolex Daytona watches and I'll be covering this range, this Rolex range during many videos follow in the future so stay tuned for more thank you guys for watching please like subscribe